Prostate cancer is the second most frequent cancer diagnosis made in men and the fifth leading cause of death worldwide. Not exactly a happy video introduction. Luckily though, there is some promising research coming out about a molecule called finasteride, where in a trial of over 18,000 men, there was a near 25% reduction in prostate cancer rates. So in this video, we'll go through how finasteride works, the research on prostate cancer because it does get a bit complicated, and then the side effects. Let's get into it. Finasteride is used in medicine for male patterned baldness and to shrink the size of the prostate. It works by blocking the conversion of testosterone to the more potent dihydrotestosterone. Dihydrotestosterone is vital for male development, but once adulthood is reached, it does not play a significant role in the normal bodily functions of adults. The most noticeable effects are prostate enlargement and male patterned hair loss as they age. There are some other important effects of dihydrotestosterone, but we'll come to that later in the video. Now let's have a look at finasteride's effects on the prostate. Because there's less dihydrotestosterone, it shrinks the prostate down. So in 2003, published in the New England Journal of Medicine, they wanted to explore what effect finasteride has on prostate cancer. So what they did is randomly assign over 18,000 men aged 55 years or older. So half of them were on finasteride 5 milligrams and the other half were on placebo. They were on a dummy pill. The patients were followed up for 7 years and in the finasteride group there was an 18 18.4% chance of developing prostate cancer, but it was much higher in the placebo group, where it was 24.4%. So overall, there was almost a 25% reduction in the risk of developing prostate cancer. That is a big deal. This trial is top-notch. There's enough people in the trial, and it's a randomized, placebo-controlled study. Plus, the benefits were seen after a seven-year period. So some further data came out when these patients were followed up for an even longer period of time. That brings us to the 2013 trial, again published in the New England Journal of Medicine. It's the same group of patients, but now they're followed up for an 18-year period. And now the difference is even greater. We're seeing a 30% reduction in prostate cancer rates when on finasteride. Now, this sounds wonderful, but there is a big problem. While overall there were lower rates of prostate cancer in the finasteride groups, the cancers that did happen seemed to be more aggressive. That's a worrying finding. We do have good data showing that finasteride does reduce the rates of prostate cancer, but when cancer does happen in the finasteride group, it seems to be high grade. What we mean by this is that it seems to be aggressive. And here's where it gets a bit complicated. We can see from the data that the survival rates in the finasteride group compared to placebo, they're essentially exactly the same. So something interesting is happening here and we need to take a closer look at the data. Overall, finasteride does reduce prostate cancer rates, but it seems from the initial data that maybe finasteride increases the aggressiveness of the prostate cancers that start. However, overall, there doesn't seem to be a difference in the survival rates between the finasteride group and the placebo groups. So what's going on? What we're seeing here is a phenomenon called detection bias. So when I check the prostates of my male patients, if the prostate is particularly large, it can be quite difficult to find irregularities in the prostate. So what I'm looking for is lumps or bumps. But if the prostate is swollen and large, I might miss those deeper lumps. So what seems to be happening is that because finasteride shrinks the size of the prostate, we can find those high grade or aggressive cancers earlier. So it doesn't seem to be the finasteride that's causing these aggressive cancers. Instead what's happening is that because of the finasteride, we can find those aggressive cancers earlier. But we need to be sure about this, which leads us on to a 2019 trial, once again published in the New England Journal of Medicine. It's following up those original men that were put into either finasteride or placebo. Overall, there appeared to be a 25% lower risk of death from prostate cancer in the men who took finasteride compared to placebo. But because it was a small number of deaths, it didn't reach statistical significance. So what we mean by this is that we can't be sure about this finding. So there's a trend towards improved survival rates with the finasteride group, but we can't confirm it yet. 
What this does mean is that early concerns regarding an association between finasteride and an increased risk of high-grade or aggressive prostate cancers have not been borne out. So Dr. Ian Thompson, who was the principal investigator of these trials, had this to say, quote, what we can now say is that finasteride not only significantly reduces a man's risk of prostate cancer, it is safe to use based on very long-term follow-up in our study. We found no increased risk of prostate cancer death in men who took finasteride compared to men who did not. So overall, we've got very good data showing that finasteride does reduce prostate cancer rates and the initial concerns that maybe finasteride would increase aggressive cancers that has not been borne out in the data. Instead, those initial concerns were likely because of detection bias. Once again, the size of the prostate was smaller, so it's easier to examine and find early cancers. So we've gone through the benefits of finasteride. What about the side effects? What about the risks? Because in virtually all trials, they show a 2 to 4% increase in reported erectile dysfunction, gynecomastia, decreases in ejaculate volume and libido for the people who are on finasteride. What the trials do show is that these effects are reversible and therefore uncommon after the first year of therapy. What this does show us though is that dihydrotestosterone, it's not just associated with the size of the prostate or male patterned baldness, there are other effects as well. For me, I do find this data set very intriguing and I wonder in the future as more data comes out whether most men would be on finasteride. Plus, there is the trend of improved survival rates when men take finasteride. There's also the question of dose. So in these trials, they used 5 milligrams of finasteride. That is the dose that we use in medicine to shrink the size of the prostate. But for hair loss, we only use 1 milligram. So I do wonder, to get these beneficial effects on reducing prostate cancer rates, can we get away with just 1 milligram and reduce those side effects?